Good morning, church. He has risen. Tonight's announcements are Sunday school starts at 9.30 each Sunday. There is youth group this week at 6 p.m. Men's group this week, Thursday at 6 p.m. And women's Bible study this Thursday. As a reminder, those of you watching online, we take communion together each week. And if you'd like to stop by the church during the week, we can give you communion supplies and please contact Leon. Here at Sio Christian Church, we do not pass the offering plate. We have an offering box in the back of the auditorium. We also have online giving. You can also mail your tithes and offerings to Post Office Box 171, Sio, Oregon 97374. Women's Retreat is April 26th through the 28th, and it's time to get registered. High school lunch this week is biscuits and gravy. We start preparing for lunch at 9 a.m. All are welcome to come and help. We have a list of needed supplies. If you're interested in helping, please see Leon. Um, O'Brien Medical Clinic 2024 Annual Banquet is April 23rd at the Lebanon River Center, and Sio Christian Church has two tables reserved. And is there any more announcements? There's a sign-up sheet for the Abria. Okay. All right, cool. The women's retreat. Deborah has been voluntold. She's in charge of getting people registered. That's what she told me. So I have flyers that have information about the women's retreat and also sign-up stuff on the back of it. So if you'd like one of these, come see Deborah. Okay. You'll have them waiting. And it's a great time for all. And if you're interested, without, <laughs> without a commitment, if you're interested, please put your name on the list so we can reserve a spot rather than take it or not. You don't want to not have a spot so you can go. Reserve your spot. Any other announcements? Prayer time. Walk all the way over here. Good morning. Good morning. So I feel so much better than I did last week. So I'm glad to be here. I was here last week, but not feeling very good at all. So I always like to start out with the praises. Freddie. I thank you again for filling in for me last week. And, uh, Pat. Um, Beth had a couple praises she wanted to bring. She has a new home, um, a new trailer it, that we'll be pick, getting in probably this week, and she found a good home for her, her present home. She was so grateful. Okay. <laughs> and who was that again? Beth. 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 Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Oh. Um, Brenda. John was diagnosed with having clots in his leg, and they took a test. They are no clots in his leg. Praise the Lord. Very good. Thank you. I should also say that I'm very grateful that we have Beth's house wired appropriately wired for uh, for a trailer and that I have water and everything's just wonderful at our house. <laughs> cool. Very good. And we thank Keith. Kathy barely posted on the prayer chain says that Patsy is home and doing much better. Praise God that she's home. Yes. From where? Kathy Say again. Okay. Hospital or something. Okay. Is there any more praises? See, the sun is trying to peek out a little bit. That's always nice. I pray the Lord that my toes, even though they're still hurting, but it's because I had fire. 
I've got here in the Ingrid Tutorial that was <coughs> kind of so much pain. Um, so I'm just I'm just thankful for that. Okay, thank you. It's my husband's birthday, so I have a praise for that. <laughs> Also, I just pray for, I mean, praise for people that are willing to help others. Like Vern was willing to come by last week and, and see what he could do for my not having water and so forth. Just thank you and thank the Lord for him and others. Okay, anybody else? Let's move on to our um, prayer, our prayer request then. I know that um, Lydia's husband's grandma um, passed away, I believe, sometime either Friday or Saturday. I am not exactly sure. So need to keep Lydia and the girls in prayer. Lydia is my daughter, so um, need to keep them, them in prayers and see how things are going to go with them. And need prayers for my old friend Rick Williams who's in the hospital with uh, septus and double pneumonia. His daughter had, uh, they had trouble trying to find a place to put him and he's been moved uh, into the valley from Newport so he gets better care. So but he needs some prayers. He's struggling. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Bob and Della. Oh, yeah. Yep. Go ahead, Judy. Um, whoops. Um, Gretchen, not Gretchen, Sharon Barker. Um, she took her good care. She tried to fight. Who? That has rotor bigger, so Gretchen took her. So if we could remember her this morning. Okay, Sharon? Uh -huh. Okay. And, and Louise. Also, a praise and ongoing prayer request. My granddaughter, Bailey's husband, grandma passed away. And I just want to say thank you to the couple of people from within the church that reached out to him. Um, they basically said, if you need to talk, I'm always here. And he never had that kind of support system before, so he was kind of like, what's really going on? And I said, they just start loving you through God. Anyway, so for that, I would say, well, that please continue to pray for him. He's really having a hard time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Then my neighbor had a gentleman working on her roof. <coughs> and what day was that? Thursday had a hold of you? Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. Wednesday. <coughs> Wednesday, the gentleman fell off the roof. <coughs> Broke his hip in three spots. Oh. So oh. keep him in your prayers. His name is Keith. And then also, the, she needs somebody to finish her roof up. But. Gotta praise God that Robert was there to put some tar paper on to protect the wood that was exposed. Thank you, Robert. Oh, okay. Is there anybody else? <coughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you. Lord, we bring up the praises that we have. Lord, we just thank you for 
all the work that you've done in our lives, Lord. And we just thank you for the love you give us. Lord, we just ask you to be with those who are sick. Lord, just heal them. And Lord, there's been deaths in the families. Just ask you to be with the families and everybody involved, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to be with those who are searching for home, for a home to live and rent. Lord, just ask you to be with them and just help them find the right place, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to be with Keith who fell off the roof. Lord, just be with him and heal his body, Lord. Just guide us and direct us through without this day. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
Good morning, church. We come to a time in our service when we want to remember what Christ has done. Uh, I want to read out of Romans 1. Here we go. Paul's writing to the church. He'd been wanting to visit them, but things kept getting in his way. And he tells them that he's obligated both to the Greeks and the non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I'm so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. What was that gospel? Was the gospel how you do a pattern of worship? You know, with the preaching and Bible reading and giving and communion and song? I don't think so. Was it whether or not you could have music in a church or not? I don't think so. Paul told another church that he claimed to know nothing among them but Christ and him crucified. And you know what? That's the gospel. That's the gospel of Jesus. Jesus Christ crucified for us. 
he goes on there and he says he's not ashamed of that gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it's written, the righteous will live by faith. Yes, bearers, we're ambassadors, we're carriers of the gospel of Christ, which is Christ. That's why we're to live or strive to live the best we can to exemplify the love that God has given us through Jesus. It's not always easy. We were talking this morning in our Sunday school class Many of you should have been there. But anyhow, <clears throat> we have desserts. Uh, we, uh, we talked about how the world is something we just don't recognize from when most of us were kids. Well, it's been that way ever since Jesus came. The world is broken. And the only thing that can heal it is Jesus. And we're called as believers in Christ to distribute that message of love, the love of God for all of his creatures. We come together today to partake of this loaf and cup. And why do we do that? To remember Jesus. That's the focus on Christ. You get into a doctrinal difference with someone, always focus on Jesus because that's the gospel. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we come before your throne of grace today with thanksgiving. We thank you so much for setting Jesus up for us. We just thank you for all that you've done for us. And we ask now that you might bless this loaf and bless this cup to their intended uses, Father, to nurture us, to encourage us, to deliver us for your service. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The bread of Christ the body of Christ. The juice is the blood of Christ for us. Partake of it in a worthy manner. Thank you, thank you. Now the main attraction. We'll have Leon come up. Testing. Hello. There we go. Good morning, church. Again, we are trying something different with Chris and I. So he's got my right hand. Okay. He's going to be here for a little bit. And he's going to sit down and he's going to have his microphone help me read more of God's word today. Yep. I need help. That's why I'm here now. <laughs> All right. So, Miss Pat, are you ready to sing? Ready to sing, Chris? Yes. All right. 
Are you ready? Okay. All right. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shine all over all the world, I'm going to let it shine. Shine all over all the world, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. As some of you know, tomorrow there is an eclipse, and I guess Jesus is getting even closer to coming back because of the eclipse. Amen. Yep. I don't know if you guys. Well, oh, Mike's like, oh, oh no. rabbit trails. Yep. That's what we talked about in the Sunday school class this morning, rabbit trails, rabbit holes, Squirrel. squirrels, that's right. Because there's people out there that believe that, that Christ is coming back even sooner than people think because of the eclipse. And one of the big things that I was telling the kids in Sunday school was it's kind of funny how the center of the universe is, the Ameri is America, the United States of America. I don't know if you noticed that, that we are the center because the eclipse came across seven years ago, and now it's going to go up, and it's making a cross in the middle of the United States of America, and therefore Christ is coming back. It's one of the signs, okay? Besides seven years, seven cities of Salem, seven cities of Nineveh. It's an interesting thing. Look it up, guys. Look into it. My biggest thing with the kids this morning was know God's word, Okay? And not just knowing God's word, it is knowing who God is. Okay? Yeah, we're not, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can talk about, Grandma. But there's a lot. There's a lot there's on a that video. Yes. We, we're dicing up a video. Yeah. It's know God's word. Be in God's word. And the, the other big part of that is have a relationship with Jesus. That's what it's about. Having a relationship with him. Okay? That's the way you know when these people come and they talk and because here's the sad part of it. When things don't happen the way they say that they interpret the Bible, it makes Christians look pretty. Yeah. But guess what? Is God big enough for that? Does God have broad enough shoulders for this? Yeah. yeah. He has for years. Okay? So, but again, be in God's word. Now, we're going to start doing something today for the next two weeks. We're going to be closing up the book of 1 Timothy. We're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts. How many people like do's and don'ts? They keep you, know, you out of trouble. What? They keep you out of trouble. To a certain degree. Okay. A don't. For example, is when, if you play golf. How many people play golf here? Mini golf. Here we give me a mini golf. Different mini golf. All right. In golf, you don't drive your cart on the green. Do you know that? You don't. But in fishing, that's what you do. You do hold your rod, your tip up when you're reeling in the fish. You know that? No. Yeah, you hold it up. <laughs> but here's another do or don't. Don't point your, uh, your weapon, your gun, and anything that you're not willing to shoot. Okay? Next one. When you're singing, you do breathe from your nose. Diaphragm. That's right. And you don't allow children to take control when you go to Costco. <laughs> <laughs> but you do go get the free samples when you go to Costco. Everybody. I mean, and I, I, I've learned this is that they cannot tell you to have only one. You can eat as much as you want. I was there... What day? Wednesday I was there. Wednesday. And I was eating some crackers with some beautiful dip they had there. And yeah, I kept eating. 
talking to everybody. These are really good. You should try these crisps. <laughs> the crackers are better than the chips. The chips they had were whole grain. The crackers, they were good. Plus the crackers were bigger. The biggest complaint was people telling me I was eating all their food. <laughs> was that I said, well, wait in line. I'm ahead of you. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I wasn't eating that many. But, but the lady was telling me when she was doing the candy, somebody did walk up, open their purse up, and swipe all the candy into the purse and walk away. She took it to another I look level. different without a skirt on. <laughs> Yeah. So, do's and don'ts. We're going to talk about do's and don'ts. The do's and don'ts of our pursuit. Our pursuits. Okay? So today we're going to be talking about two um, don'ts that are here in the first part of our scripture. But before we go any farther, I want to have a word of prayer. So let's we pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can laugh. Thank you that we can cry, too. That you've taught us that. Lord, you've given us all kinds of emotions. We thank you for making us unique. We thank you for the many gifts that we have in our lives, from food to clothing to water to cars to bikes to a building, two buildings to live in, to meet in. We thank you for these blessings, Father. We ask you to help us to use these things that we have to bring glory and honor to you, to lead others to you, to let your light shine through. Well, we ask you to be with us right now as we study your passage of scripture here. Let your words again be spoken. Let your words be heard and help us with our, our lives. Give us strength, the wisdom, and knowledge to go out and live this for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Like I said, we're heading towards the finish line of 1 Timothy. Okay, two weeks. Like I said, this week, next week, and then we're done with 1 Timothy, and we're going to roll right in to 2 Timothy, okay? But before we do that, Chris, can you read for us 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 10? If anyone teaches, <clears throat> pardon me, if anyone teaches false doctrine and does not agree with the sound teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the teaching that promotes godliness, he is conceited and understands nothing but has an unhealthy interest in disputes and arguments over words. From these come envy, quarreling, slander, evil suspicions, and constant disagreements among people whose minds are depraved and deprived of the truth, who imagine that godliness is a way to material gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we could take nothing out. If we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation, a trap, and many foolish and harmful desires, which plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and by craving it, some have wandered away from the truth and have pierced themselves with many griefs. Thank you, Chris. Welcome. So, like I said, the two don'ts. Don't pursue this. First one is, don't pursue false teachings. Okay? And like I was talking about, you know, the eclipse stuff. There are some false teachers out there. Okay? I was actually um, working on stuff here at the church this morning, listening to a bunch of stuff about this stuff that um, actually Emily sent me the thing yesterday about it, about the end of the world's happening tomorrow. And I, so I started researching what people are talking about. I'm like, it's, it's just another eclipse that happened seven years ago we had here in Sile. How many guys remember that eclipse? You, you remember how quickly it started and how quickly it ended and how quickly everybody left? You know, we had the edge set up. We were doing food out there like a restaurant, right, Grandma? Yeah? And people from all over came to eat food, and then as soon as the sun got blocked out and the sun came back out, everybody got in their cars and left. And the town was like a ghost town again. What? Yeah. And everybody in town got a taco salad. That's right. Yeah. And out of the park where I live, it took two or three days to get that thing filled up. We had people stuck at every little inch of grass, and it took a couple more days for them all to get out. Yeah. It was like this week long party. It was great. That was, but in town here, it wasn't as, that, as big as we thought it was going to be with all the people here. But 
but it had, tomorrow it's happening again, but not here. We'll get a, a sliver of it, I guess, if we can be able to see. But Paul here in this uh, section of his letter is speaking a very condemning way about false teachers. Now, he's talked about them before. This is not the first time Paul talked about false teachers. Okay? But in this passage, God, Paul goes on to describe some of the evil reasons for false teaching and some of the evil consequences of false teaching. First of all, uh, let's look at the evil reason behind false teaching. Verse 4. See, Chris, can you find verse 4 there? What does verse 4 say? He is conceited and understands nothing, but has an unhealthy interest in disputes and arguments over words. Okay. The teachers are conceited and they understand nothing. In other words, they're arrogant and ignorant. How many people want to be arrogant and ignorant? We like to be arrogant, right? We like to boast about ourselves. You know, Pastor Mike says the main attraction. <laughs> Far from I am not the main attraction. The main attraction is Jesus. That's what we're here about. We're here to learn and grow in our relationship with Christ. It's not Leon. But to be arrogant and ignorant, to be somebody that thinks they're all lit, but really they're ignorant in what they are. It's not a not good, good thing. It's not a healthy thing. Paul says that this person has an unhealthy interest in disputes. This person is like, likes to argue. Do you know anybody that likes to argue? Yeah, I, this passage reminds me of people on Facebook. People like to argue all the time over nothing, nothing and they know nothing a lot of times about it. Okay? Tell you a lot about being a pastor. I met some people who like to argue. Okay? I can confirm that usually they're strong, they're, they are ar arrogant and ignorant. Okay? Because they don't know what they're talking about. These kinds of people are not healthy for themselves or for the church. We must not be like these people. We must be cautious of these type of people. That's a big thing there, being cautious of people like that. Okay? Because they can cause great division in the church. Great division in your families and relationships. Okay? Now Paul goes on to describe some of the evil consequences of these false teachings. Okay? Verse 4 and 5 says, Envy, quarreling, slander, evil, suspicions, and const constant disagreement. Sounds like a good old time there. It sounds like you're watching a, a soap opera, right? A lot of drama here. He then says, they are depraved and deprived of the truth. Depraved and deprived of the truth. Church, let me assure you that we should watch out for anyone who is both arrogant and ignorant and depraved and deprived. Okay, this is part of the, the Facebook stuff, the internet stuff that people get into, or even TV shows that people like to watch. We need to stay away from this stuff. Okay, we need to be drawn closer to the to God. We need to read His Word, study it more than we put into all this other drama. We must not be false teachers either. We must not tolerate false teachers. So don't. Pursue false teaching. All right, the second one. Second, don't. Don't pursue riches. You like that one? Don't pursue riches. Pay attention to the last part of verse 5. Paul speaking about some of the motivations of the false teachers. Okay? Says that these false teachers are, imagine that godliness is a way to material gains. Did you hear that? That godliness is a way to material gain. Some of you probably have heard of false teachings, right? You know, I remember in college, getting ready to graduate, and one of the guys I went to college with was like, I got a way for you to make money in the ministry. They'll subsidize you in the, in the pulpit. And that is Amway. How many of you guys have heard of Amway? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing over there, Freddie. Oh, oh, you mean Burns and Amway guy? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the whole backing of my friend telling me is that God does not want you to be poor. Okay? Amway's a Christian company. They want to help people and all this 
stuff that his guy kept telling me about. But it's only going to cost you this much to get involved. He's like, okay. And you know, that, that big thing he said, God does not want you to be poor. So what does that mean when we have Christians that are poor? Doesn't, does that mean that they're not Christian? Well, they're poor Christians and they're rich Christians. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's smart Christians and they're <laughs> not so, Hey, be nice. <laughs> not so smart. There's all kinds of us, right? right. Okay. Like I said, there, there's been a cancer that has plagued the modern church that claims that pursuit of godliness results in material riches. Okay? You, the closer they get to God, the more richer you get. The more you give, I love this one, the more you give to God, the more you're going to give back. Bo offering boxes in the back. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's unbiblical. It's foolish. Even e an evil notion. Godliness does not equate to earthly riches. Godliness and worldly riches are totally independent of one another. One can be totally holy while being totally financially broke. Okay? I just think of a woman. She was a nun. How wealthy was Mother Teresa? What? She was rich in heaven. Here she's rich in heaven. But what did she use to write letters to all of her people that wrote letters to her? You guys remember? An old typewriter. I remember, I remember my mom having one of those suitcase ones. You open it up. There's no electricity required. You just had to make sure that that ribbon, that ink ribbon had ink on it. And just tick, tick, tick. that's what she used to write with. Type on. Okay. Didn't that woman give a lot to God? Yes. Everything to God? Yes. So if godliness equates wealthy, wouldn't she be wealthy? I mean, think of people you know that are godly people. God-fearing Christian people. Are they all wealthy? We just have to know God. We have to know God. And like John was saying, our, we're rich because of what we have stored for us in heaven. So again, we must not buy into these lies of false teachers. But, you know, it's funny that we hear it today. But there's a reason Paul's writing this to the church at Ephesus thousands years ago. Because they have the same issue then that we have today. Chris, read for us in verses 9 and 10. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation, a trap, and many foolish and harmful desires, which plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and by craving it, some have wandered away from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. So listen to how Paul describes this. He uses strong language as temptation, trap, foolish, harmful, ruin, destruction, evil, wandering, and piercing. By the way, I'm poor. I'm broke. I put all my money into winning the lottery last night because it was one point something trillion dollars or billion dollars, right? And you know, I got paid the other day, right, right, Deborah? And I, I was foolish. It says here, harmful, ruin, destruction. But somebody in Oregon won it. I don't know if you know that. One person in Oregon won it, and it wasn't me. Also, it said that there were seven people that won one million dollars in the drawing. People get foolish and do stuff like that. You could have fixed your truck. I could have fixed my truck. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Driving up and back and forth from Cottage Grove to here, they have a, a sign up with three different numbers on it that tells you like the Powerball, the Mega, and something else. You know, tells you the value, and I drove past it, and I keep telling people, I see those signs, and I'm like, ooh, I should get a ticket. But as often as I buy a ticket, I forget about buying a ticket, because I drive right past it, and I remember, I drove up to the store and got gas, and then left. And then this morning, I was going through my notes, and I was like, who, who won? One person, again, or at least one ticket, maybe 
somebody got together and bought a one bunch of tickets and one of them won. Well, 600 and something million if they take the cash buyout. Yeah. What would you do with $600 million? Fix my truck. Fix my truck. <laughs> yeah. But people do. They get stuck on this thing about money. The love of money will plant a root in our hearts that grows a blossom and blossoms into sin. Okay? Paul does not say that money is evil, okay? It's the love of money. Okay, we gotta get this right. We all have money, right? How do we, what do we do with it? Okay, the root of the love of money will cause greed to blossom in our hearts. The root of love of money will cause desire for power to blossom in our hearts. The root of the love of money will cause lying and cheating to blossom in our hearts. Okay? It's just the love of money. Prioritizing money as more important than it should be in our lives will lead us away from, the, from what is most important. And what is supposed to be most important? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. With everything, we're supposed to be loving God. Okay? And it's not just a love of money. It's a love of anything we have. My car. You know, if it was my truck. Okay? People do worship their vehicles. Okay? What's more important than God? My truck. My car. My job. My sports. We can name, all of us can name stuff that at one point in our time, in our lives, that we have placed more important than God. <coughs> then verse 6 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. Did you get that? But godliness with contentment is great gain. Contentment means being satisfied with what we have. Are you satisfied? Are you happy with what you have? Paul says to be godly and to be satisfied with whatever God has given you is great gain. In other words, if you really want to be blessed, then pursue the ways of God. Learn to be happy with what God has given you. Chris, what does verse 7 and 8 say? For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out. If we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. Okay. We brought nothing into this world. Food and clothing. That's what Paul mentions. That's the standard for what the Bible teaches us that we truly need. Everything else is above and beyond that. Paul said we should be content with these things. There's certainly nothing wrong with having more food and more clothing, okay? But we must not be caught up in the pursuit of getting more stuff, okay? We don't need more stuff. Hot wheels. Say again, Leo. Hot wheels. Hot wheels. Nope. Don't need more hot wheels. <laughs> so let's listen. To, um, gosh, I'm getting lost here. We also learn in verse nine and ten: those who pursue riches are potentially led into all kinds of evil. <coughs> you get that? Those who pursue riches. If I did take all my check, paycheck, and put it all on this, whatever it was, jackpot thing, that would be wrong. Because then I wouldn't be able to pay my bills. And then where would I be? Not being wise, would it? Not what God wants. Be content to be like, yeah, I saw that. Some guy won. Okay. But am I content with what I have? Oh, yeah. God's blessed me. So let us not pursue riches. Let us pursue godliness. Pursue godliness. Verse 9 and 10 says, or verse, at the end, verse 10, what does it say, Chris? At the end? Yep. Some have... Uh, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Some have wandered away. Don't wander away from the faith. Don't pierce yourself with many griefs. Don't love money. Instead, use it. Use it for God's glory. That's what we need to be doing. Use it for God's kingdom. 
Don't prioritize money more than you should. Consider it as a tool entrusted to you by God to use for his glory. Consider it a tool entrusted to you to be used by, for, by God to use for his glory, his kingdom, and his mission in your life. Don't, I left a blank on your sheet this week just to throw you off a little bit more. Don't pursue what? Riches. Riches. But we should be pursue Jesus. Pursue Jesus. Don't pursue riches, pursue Jesus. Okay? I knew I messed up somewhere here in my notes. How about what we have here in America? I messed it up. I can't find it in my notes now. So, there it is. It says, many people, godly people, don't have a lot of money. In fact, if you have a place to lay your head and food to eat, you are wealthier than a huge portion of our world. Amen. If you have a vehicle, you are richer compared to a lot of people in the world. Yes. Because we have a place to lay our head, a vehicle to drive. We're richer than most people in the world. And a roof over our head. And a roof over our head. That's right. So the bottom line is this. Self-centered pursuits are not God-centered pursuits. Get that? Self-centered pursuits are not God-centered pursuits. Is it loving God? Is it loving others? It's obvious. That's what I think. If you're constantly pursuing what you want, you won't be pursuing what God wants. If you're constantly pursuing what you want, you won't be pursuing what God wants. The motivation behind false teachers was self-centered. The motivation behind pursuing riches, riches is self-centered. Self-centered pursuits are not God-centered pursuits. So let's recognize some of the don'ts of our pursuits. Okay, Challenge yourself this week. First one is consider your motivation. What motivates you? What gets you going in the morning? Is it the coffee? Or is it God? Then coffee. So if you ask kids to clean up their toys, a lot of times they'll be slow and start meandering around Maybe pick up a few toys here, but if you say, as soon as you pick up those toys, we'll go to McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Then things start to happen. Likewise. I'm gonna skip that one. Motivation matters. So what motivates you? Chris? First Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Whatever you eat or drink, do it for whose glory? God. It's not for my glory. It's supposed to be for God's glory. Are you motivated to live your life for the glory of God or for something else? Think about it this week. In the weekly challenge number two, commit to pursue godliness. C.S. Lewis the author of Chronicles of Narnia said, if I find myself desires, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. Hmm. It's true. We are made for another world. We're made for being in heaven with, with God. So listen, church. You were not made merely for this world. Only God can be can truly satisfy. And we, we always try to fill our lives with stuff. Okay? That's why we talk about, you know, cars, Hot Wheels, okay? Food. There's all kinds of things that we try to put in there. Sometimes people, okay? But we don't truly put in there what's really missing, and that is God. Okay? We need to fill our lives with God. Pick up the word of God. Read it. 
Steady it. Spend time in prayer. There's a lot of things to pray for. There's a lot of things to praise and thank God for. But that's what we need to be filling it with, not stuff. We all have stuff. Some of us have too much stuff. Right? We're, we're collectors of stuff. Stop pointing your fingers, Levi. <laughs> yeah. We need more of, of Jesus in our lives, more than stuff. And for us to have more Jesus in our life, we get to tell people about Jesus more. And that's what we need to be doing, is telling people more about Jesus. Sharing his love. So challenge yourself this week to commit to pursuing godliness. We are coming to the closing of our service, and we're going to sing a commitment song called I Am Resolved. You know, if you want to accept Christ into your life, you never have, you can come forward. If you want to talk with Pastor Mike and I about getting baptized, we can do that. If you want to rededicate your life, maybe you have gone off the path the straight and narrow and gone your own way and you want to help get back on it, we can pray for it with you right now. So please stand with me as we sing I Am Resolved. But before we do sing it, let's stand up. I'll have a word of prayer before we sing. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us the don'ts. Giving us guardrails, Lord. Help us not to follow false teachings. Help us not to fall into the loving other things more important other than you. Loving things more important. I'm not saying it the right way. Loving things more than you. Help us not to do that. As you keep telling us throughout your scripture to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Help us to do that. And Lord, help us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, be with us this week as we go about doing different things from work to play to whatever. Let us point people to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I am resolved no longer to linger charmed by the world's delight things that are higher seat because it is birthday Sunday. Let me grab my birthday list and get back over here. I have quite a few birthdays. For the first of all, of course, as Freddie has jumped the gun to remind us, to let us know that it's her gorgeous husband's Vern's birthday today. How old are you, Vern? <laughs> all right. Hey, <laughs> Bob, how old is your son? I got to figure that one out. <laughs> I know. It's, it's 61, right? Three? I could have swore he told me last year he turned 60. <laughs> for a third time. For <laughs> All right. Happy birthday, Vern. We also have a young, another young lady, um, Eloise. Your birthday is on the 13th, right? Yeah. That's right. 29 and holding, right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Same thing for Miss Carol Langley on the 15th. It's her birthday. Looking good at 29. <laughs> You're welcome. And for those that, you know, if he's watching online, it's Marcus's birthday coming up on the 21st, right? How old Marcus going to be? 25. Man, he's getting... So those are the birthdays I have on my list. How about those that I don't have on my list? Is somebody here that has a birthday coming up in April that I don't know about? Josh. Josh? How's Josh going to be? Old enough. Old enough. You're not going to say, Laura? 
Mm-hmm. Okay, Mr. Uh, David in the back. Uh, Rusty? So how old is your dog going to be? Oh, he's still kind of young. Well, he's kind of the mid-age. Yeah. Nice. All right. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. So let's sing happy birthday to you beautiful people. Happy birthday to you, you, and you. Happy birthday to you, you, and you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Anniversaries. See, Shannon, your husband didn't come today. So this on April 3rd was David and what's your wife's name? (laughs) <laughs> Margie. It was their birthday on the 3rd. That was on Wednesday. Happy anniversary. And then on the 29th comes Miss Shannon and Steve's anniversary. Is there any other anniversaries that I don't have on my list? Okay. All right. Let's sing. Happy anniversary to the two beautiful couples. Happy anniversary to you, you. Happy anniversary to you, you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. All right. And many more. Yep. And many more. Our closing song this month is The Family of God. So, like we like to do at the end of our service, is everybody stand up, grab your neighbor's hands. Look to your left, look to your right, tell them you love them, but then remind them that God loves them even more. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain. some cake in the fellowship hall and have a great week and God bless.